So we are going over our Lewis dot diagrams of the metals and nonmetals that we had in our worksheets. So I'm going to use a little, uh, an easier way to do this possibly, but I want you to see how I build these Lewis dot diagrams that show the bonding. First and foremost, we're dealing with ionic compounds, which means I have a metal and a nonmetal, which means I have someone good at losing the metal, someone good at gaining the nonmetal. There's going to be a transfer. Okay? So the first thing you do, you don't know how many of each element. Don't fall in love with the fact there's going to be one K and one Br here. We're going to start with one apiece. So I start with a K, maybe, and I go and look for its valence electrons. On the periodic table, we have one valence electron in alkaline earth, so I'm going to put it there, maybe. Possibly. Possibly. Here we go. So K has got one dot, one valence electron. That's called electron dot diagram of the element. We've covered that. We're showing the valence electron. It's about the valence electrons in this course. Okay, the kernel electrons are stable. They're not going to be available and do anything for bonding. We grab the Br, and we know that's a halogen. Group 17's got seven valence electrons. So I gotta grab seven of these possibly. So one, maybe, maybe. That's two, three. Being nice to me today. Four, and I'm having too much fun. I'm going to draw these in a second because I'm wasting time. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> and there's my seven. Okay, now clearly bromide is more electronegative than the potassium. Okay, so it's great at gaining. In fact, the difference in electronegativity is so great, just like yesterday, me and Kara had a tug of war. Kara was the non was the metal, I was the non-metal, and I won. I pulled the electron away because the difference in electronegativity was so great. So bromide takes, possibly, takes the electron from the potassium. Immediately, we put brackets up here to show that this thing collectively is negative one. Maybe not. And I'll just write it. Okay? Potassium lost its valence electron, so we show brackets that are empty to show that there are no valence electrons left. It lost all its valence. Notice bromide has its octet. Now, how do I know I'm done? Well, I know I'm done because, number one, the charge equals zero. When you build a chemical formula, the charge becomes zero. And I know that each element is now as stable as a noble gas. Bromide gained one and now has eight. Just like in its row, if you look, krypton has eight. All right, potassium lost one to have the same um, electron configuration as argon. So I know I'm done when the metal's empty and the nonmetals are filled and my charge is equal zero. In this case, clearly, 1K plus hooks up with 1KBr. And when I write the chemical formula, it's KBr. I don't show any charges. Why do you think I do not show any charges? Because it's electrically neutral. The negative and the positive cancel out. Compound is neutral. Now, when I write the chemical formula, I put a solid here to show that this chemical attracts itself so well, it makes a three-dimensional crystal lattice. Okay, the positive attract the negative so well, these attractions are so strong, the strongest type of attractions are in solids. So you make solids, yes? Are all compounds ionic? All compounds, no. There are gonna be molecular compounds and metallic. So this is one of the three. This is the first one, okay? Um, and we call these compounds that are ionic salts. You've heard the word salt before, and you think of sodium chloride, table salt, but there are many salts. Okay, this is another example of a salt. The chemical name, very simple. The element that's positive keeps its name, so it's potassium. And then we have the nonmetal, which is negative, is at the end. And it's normally bromine, but because the naming system is binary for salts, we add the famous IDE ending. So we call it potassium bromide. And that would never change 
if I had two bromides and one, it would not be any different. Okay? Now, we call this the chemical formula of this salt, an ionic compound, an empirical formula. Empirical means lowest ratio. Empirical. Why is the lowest ratio? It is not a chemical formula. Do not fall in love with the idea that these are molecules. These are just the lowest what? Number of ions, the lowest ratio in a crystal. If this was KBR, and KBR probably makes this kind of arrangement, it's one positive, uh, one positive to one negative. So it probably makes this arrangement. Okay? And if I wanted the chemical formula of this salt, of this crystal, I would not count all the different ions, I would know it's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's what it's telling me. It's not a molecule. Okay, let's continue on. The next one you did was magnesium fluoride. So we had Mg and we had some fluorine. Again, I don't know how many I need. It's not always going to be one-to-one. -one. I got to make sure that my, my metals are empty and my non-metals are filled so that they both have noble gas configurations. All right, so start with magne magnesium, maybe. I'm having so much fun. Two of these. You can need a firmware upgrade. All right, we got two. I'm going to give up on the uh, other side. So for fluorine, I have how many dots? Yeah, I have seven because fluorine has seven valence electrons. And if you don't know that, I go to my reference table and I will get two dash seven. That's seven, the outermost, the seven valence electrons. Now, let's get rid of that. Now, what's going to happen? Well, fluorine is much more electronegative than magnesium, so fluorine is going to take his cookies, take his, med take his lunch money. Hope none of you guys do that. All right, maybe. I'm done with these dots. I think I'm gonna move them, get you out of here. We'll just do dots over here. Let's just delete them. <laughs> it's just not working as well as it should. I think it needs a firmware upgrade. Okay, so magnesium has two valence electrons and fluorine takes one. Okay, fluorine immediately becomes what? What charge is it now by gaining one? Gained an electron, which is negative. Negative one. And you may say, oh, Mr. Grotsky, well, this lost one, so this should be plus one. What's wrong with it? needs to lose one more because if you look at magnesium's configuration 2-8-2 it wants to have a what configuration of a noble gas okay so it needs to lose both of these so that's not going to work so that's not going to work so how can it lose one more Well, the only way, yeah. Uh, yeah, there must be another fluorine or fluoride ion. In this case, another fluorine with um, seven valence electrons. And of course, it just takes this one right here, maybe. And now, some more brackets. No trouble with the brackets, just my dots. And then I write another negative one here. Now, this lost two electrons. What's its charge? Plus two. Am I done? Does my metal have empty? Did my metal lose all its valence electrons? Yes. Did my non-metals involved gain all the electrons that have eight? Yes. They both became stable. What's the overall charge now? Zero. So we know we did this right. There's one magnesium. There's two fluorines. So we put a two here to show that. What's the what's the what's the phase? 
of an ionic compound because we made strong ions that are attracting. What's the strongest attraction? What phase has the strongest attractions? Solids. Solids. What's the name? Magnesium. Right. Magnesium's in front, so it becomes magnesium. And the fluorine's behind it. We add IDE. Not hard, right? In this case, you needed two fluorines to balance off the two magnesiums. Where you put the Fs and magnesium, it doesn't matter. As long as I see a magnesium that has no electrons in plus two, and I see fluorines with the full octet because each one gained one and is negative one apiece, that's okay. Where they go, who cares? We know that it's just the lowest ratio of ions here. That's all that is. Okay? Now, moving forward, the next one, we're going to get crazier. Not really. Sodium. Sulfur. Sodium has... One valence electron. Sulfur has six. Again, if you don't know that, you gotta go to the periodic table. Sulfur is two dash eight dash. Where's my sulfur over there? One. Sulfur is two dash eight dash six. So you can see that my valence electrons are what I'm putting dots as. All right. Now. Sulfur is the nonmetal. High electronegativity. This guy holds on to them loosely. It's going to be a tug of war again. Here comes Kara, and Kara's going to lose again. And sulfur gains one. Sodium lost its own. It's only valence electron. So it becomes what charge? Plus one, correct. Am I done? Sulfur becomes negative two. By gaining one, the sulfur has seven. But what's the number we're looking for? That stable number. It needs one more. So how does it get one more? I need another what? Yeah, that's right. Now the sulfur, which we know has a valence electron, we'll make it a black dot. Sulfur grabs it. Ah, it's happy. Everybody's happy and stable. Sulfur becomes collectively uh, negative two, and the sodium becomes plus one. Do all the charges equal zero? Yeah. In this case, I needed two sodiums for one sulfur, and the chemical formula is Na, a little subscript two to show that there's two of these, and one S. Because these are positive and negative, they attract each other the strongest. What phase are we always talking about? Solid. And of course, what's the name? Name of the what? Positive ion first, so it's sodium that never changes. Now I don't say disodium. Ah, I don't say monoxide. You hear carbon dioxide. We're not using the IUPAC naming system. Is what we're learning about. Takes the number. Doesn't care what number of ions you need to make this neutral. Just what element did you use? So sodium, and we had sulfur. Except the ending for this becomes sulfide. It was sulfur. That's it. That's pretty easy, I think. All right? But hey, I've been doing it for a while, and I'm tall. All right. Here we go with the hard ones. Maybe. I don't know. Aluminum and fluorine. Aluminum has how many valence electrons? It is 2 dash 8 dash 3. How many valence electrons? There are three, so I write them. Where you write them doesn't matter. Fluorine, okay, is two dash seven. It's got seven dots. So I draw them. All right. Non-metal, metal, non-metal, non higher electronegativity. It's so great, it's able to pull and transfer this electron immediately. This fluorine becomes stable. Yeah. Okay. And it has the configuration now of a noble gas. It gained one. So it's negative one. Flu now, this guy lost. Lost one. So now it's 2 8 2. No good. It's got to do what? Lose all of them. So what am I going to need? Another F, I guess. Two Fs? One F? Four Fs? No. It's 
bounce them around. I like when they bounce. Okay. So why do I need two more reps? Because each F is going to do what? Yeah. Okay, take one more. Correct. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is much stronger. Boom. Oop. We don't take two of them. Just want to take one. So just get rid of. Get rid of that one. That one goes there. Here comes our brackets. Okay, negative one. Now there's one more here, so I'll draw it because I kind of get rid of it. All right. Now of course there's another fluorine needed. It has one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's more electronegative than the aluminum, and it loses the tug of war. Oh. I had this, I had to mess around. Oh, there we go. Oh. I want you. Hi. Right there. <laughs> Sorry. Here it comes. Now brackets, as we talked about yesterday, aren't necessary, but they're polite. And what do they help us do? What do brackets help us do? Keep them separated. Okay, now, we're not done yet. Because if I was to leave this alone, it's okay not to have brackets, but what's aluminum missing? How many electrons did it lose? So what's its charge? Plus three. Now, again, you can do this without brackets if you like. But here's why brackets help. Right, let's go back a couple of pages here. Let's go to this one. Eh, let's go to the first one. If I didn't have brackets and you did this, let's remove the brackets. Let's be crazy. Move the brackets. Let me move this closer. Let's say you did this. Let's say you did this right here, KBR, and you'd have the brackets. You'd be telling me that these guys are probably sharing. Ooh, there's no sharing. Me and Kara did not share the rope yesterday. I, I was so much stronger. Been working out. Okay. And I pull the rope away from her because I'm so much more what? Electronegative. So you're showing sharing here. You'll have some of the rope, I'll have some of the rope. No, it was a complete transfer because of that. So you can't do that. So the show, to help you remember that these things are, or this thing actually works, okay? We might move this over and we put the brackets to show that these electrons belong to bromide. It's just a nice way to make sure you don't show sharing. So continue on. And here comes the hardest one. It doesn't come any harder than this. Okay? Here comes the strontium. Here comes the P. Okay, strontium has an alkaline earth metal, two valence electrons. So I draw it. One, I'll wait, la la la, then two. So I can move them independently. We'll see. P has five valence electrons in group 15. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right. So P is a non-metal. That's Grotsky. Metal, Kara. Difference in electronegativity is so great. Phosphorus takes this one, and it has room for more, doesn't it? Takes this one. Strontium is now empty. It lost two, so it's plus two. Now you say, well, phosphorus gained two, right? So it must be what charge? Is this phosphorus the way you should write it? Is this phosphorus as stable as a noble gas by gaining two? No, yeah. no it needs how many more? Yeah. One more. It needs to have that eight. So we're going to need another what? Who can it get another electron from? Another strontium, who we write with one, I'll wait, and then two. So this phosphorus can grab this one. Ah, now it's stable. It's got its eight. Now it's what charge? By gaining three. By gaining three, what charge is it? Yes, say it aggressively. It's got three. Okay, say it aggressively. All right, who can say it aggressively? All right, now, am I done? No, because strontium's got to lose all of them, so it's got to lose it to somebody else. So who do I need now? Yeah. Who can grab strontium's electron? I need another what? Yeah. Non-metal, right? I need another P. P has how many valence electrons? Five. One, two, three, four, yeah. and five. So this one 
can grab it, maybe. Strontium is empty, so it becomes plus two. But phosphorus needs how many more? Two. Ah, oh, this is going to work out. Why? Why is this going to work out? Because strontium has how many valence? Two. two. And this one needs two more. And you've got an end in sight. So phosphorus transfers the electron. In some way, someone's going to forget in a bonding cat or rat or dog, ionic bonds do what? They transfer. You pull them away. The difference in the electronegativity. Watch me dragging them. I'm not showing sharing. The brackets show separation. Me and Kara. So, strontium is plus two. And this guy right here, by gaining three, is now negative three. I am done for two reasons. What, what are my two reasons? They're all stable. They're all stable. I like that. They all have the stable configurations of a noble gas. That's the reason why they become ions. What's the second one? Being stable is the same thing as saying the what? The metal lost all of its valence. The non-metal gained enough to have eight. What's another way to know you're done? All the charges equal what? Zero. Zero. Chemical formula? How many strontiums do I need here? Three. Little subs get three of the strontium. How many Ps? Two. Because these are strong charges, especially a plus two, I mean a plus two and negative three, they're gonna stick together so strong they're going to make what phase? Who has the strongest attractions of your three phases? Solids do. And the name of this? Take the name of the first one, strontium. You don't change it. The one that's positive goes in front. And this would be phosphorus. But because it's a naming system, we add phosphide, I-D-E. It's a binary naming system. That's the hardest one I can give you. It's the hardest one. Okay, but it works by the transfer of electrons. Last one, pretty simple one. We've got magnesium, we've got sulfur. Magnesium has two valence electrons. Sulfur has six, and this is a nice match, why? Yeah, sulfur needs how many to make it work? Two, boom. It gained two, so it's negative two. Magnesium lost two. I know I'm done because the non-metals, in this case only one, has its eight, is stable like Sam said, and the metal lost what it needed to become stable, and the charge is equal zero. This would be MgS, positive goes in front, it's a solid, and of course it's magnesium, the name of the element in front, doesn't matter how many, and this is sulfide. Any questions? I was going to have a rat on this, but I wanted to go over this and make sure we're definitely solid on that. Okay? And you have me recorded. <laughs>